Uh, hi, my name is Slobodan uh, Utvic. Uh, I'm from Serbia. I'm a lead uh, architect and co-founder in Berlin startup Comtravo. Uh, we're a business-to-business -business travel agency. Um, and uh, I've been working as a software developer uh, slash architect for the last 15 years, uh, primarily uh, working with startups. This is my sixth startup, uh, and uh, I enjoy the building things. So basically, the problem that we were facing when we started the building Com travel was the harsh reality, and that is that uh, we are surrounded and the whole industry is governed by existing services. So for us, the from get-go, we had a, a situation where we had to depend on uh, multiple uh, services, third-party APIs, and uh, building a monolith in the middle of this uh, was just uh, would not give us much benefits because we would still have to come up with the patterns and uh, come up with solutions for um, uh, integrating and working with a lot of APIs. And for this, uh, then the uh, idea of uh, building the um, our own services and inter uh, making them interact was uh, uh, an interesting one. Um, previously, we had uh, an experience building the uh, service-oriented architectures, and uh, this was a good experience, and it uh, gave us uh, a good introduction in what was facing us. And the biggest benefit uh, or the biggest goal that we had uh, with going with microservices was to limit the scope of mass uh, due to rapid prototyping that we will face eventually. It wasn't a, really a step-by-step -step plan that we had, uh, like any startup, you're getting into new territory and uh, you're not really sure what you uh, are getting to. So we set up a couple of basic principles uh, so, uh, that we uh, think that will get us uh, <laughs> all the way. Uh, so the principles are basically that we build services to hold state. Uh, usually we're using a REST API. Uh, then we have all these services uh, on the state change they emit events, which gets us to the second point of the architecture, that's the event-driven architecture, where we have the actors um, that handle the workflows. So basically the actors are in charge of uh, moving the state from one uh, position to another, uh, depending on what workflow needs to be applied. Uh, right now we have a mixture of uh, actors in the system, uh, whether humans or, in our case, uh, AWS Lambda agents uh, that uh, are uh, essentially moving uh, our documents from uh, one point to another. Uh, next thing that we uh, figure out uh, immediately is that we need to uh, focus on automation. And uh, this was a, a clear requirement for us that we are able to automate step and uh, make them repetitive uh, to be able to add services fast, to be able to um, check the integrity of the whole system. We needed also a huge automation on the CI side. Uh, and this was one of the challenges that uh, uh, was the toughest one for us uh, to uh, get to the point where the whole ecosystem with the um, dozen of services is running smoothly and is able to talk to one another. Basically, we started off uh, with the technologies that uh, we used before and uh, knew. Uh, and uh, for instance, on the automation side, we started with uh, Chef. We were looking at Chef versus Puppet and ended up using Docker. Uh, so their uh, reality again uh, kicks in, and uh, uh, since the in the beginning it's a really small team, uh, you really want to go with something that's lightweight, that's uh, manageable, that will get to results really fast. So we ended up using Docker, and so far it's been working nicely. Uh, next uh, big uh, challenge or big step that we did not ex uh, accept expect uh, was uh, we started off with multiple repositories. And uh, we, at some point, got to the problem, or we were aware of the integration problem, uh, and, uh, but it came at us much faster. So we switched from multiple repositories to one repository. So all our code base now is uh, in one repository, and we are relying only on static linking between uh, services. Um, other things that we choose in the beginning, like Swagger, uh, Mongo, AWS, are still holding. They are still... Uh, Good, uh, working good for us, and we're happy with them. Uh, we also started off with uh, 
CoffeeScript, uh, and uh, now we're migrating to ES6. The difficult part, uh, I would say, would be the uh, integration uh, or managing the whole complexity and uh, ensuring that all these uh, uh, third-party and uh, homegrown services are interacting uh, nicely with <clears throat> one another. Uh, so we have uh, run into automation problems and the tool chain that we choose in the beginning is not really suitable for... Uh, uh, one repository approach and they're not suitable for uh, handling uh, big integration tests uh, uh, that uh, cover uh, dozens of services. Um, we ran into problems with uh, building up mock servers and um, uh, being able to express the whole complexity of the user uh, stories or use cases that uh, uh, we are facing and using in, in, within the mock, uh, mock servers. So I would say these are the, the biggest uh, problems we have tackled uh, or are tackling at the moment still. And uh, we will keep, uh, continue pushing and uh, trying to solve the uh, problems that, uh, that are ahead of us. The, the plans for us are to move forward. Uh, we want to invest more into automation. Uh, we want to get to the point of uh, having uh, ability to create and uh, throw away uh, environments uh, at will. Uh, we want to uh, get to the point of uh, integrating the fully mocking Lambda service uh, on our end to be able to run the uh, full-blown integration test that would uh, go through the um, home-run uh, replica of our uh, production. Uh, we want to work on speeding up tests and uh, keep the basic principles uh, intact uh, as we do this. And also on the other side, we want to uh, grow our team and uh, integrate more developers into our small startup.